In episode 17 of Roots of Humanity, I talked to Maria Solko about what it's like to survive in the coldest place on Earth. With an informative social media presence showing life in Yakutia, Maria walks us through the differences between Yakutia and Siberia and how the ethnic and cultural roots of the Far East differ from Moscow's Russia. It's like a different country. The climate, the people, the culture, the food, it's, it's very different. How do people grow food when permafrost makes the ground infertile? What does horse meat taste like? And why is eating it in the heart of Yakutia a tradition? Tune in to hear about my recent trip to Russia in the dead of winter, my experience taking an ice bath, and what it means to be a mom in the most remote, unheard of place in our world. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get into it. Hi, Maria, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? It's so good to see you again. Yes, I'm so happy to see you. When, when was I there? In February? So that was like six months ago? Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, six months ago. Wow. I, I often think about Yakutsk. I mean, that place is so surreal and so beautiful. <laughs> it was such a fun trip. What are your good memories of that trip? Well, it was really nice to see you and Amar. You are guys so different <laughs> from everyone I know. And I was really glad just to be with you. Is different a good or a bad thing? A good, good. Of course, good. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. I, I mean, I just when I close my eyes, I can just see those trees that are like completely frozen and the permafrost and going in un underground and those beautiful ice sculptures and riding on that little slide thing in the park. And uh, of course, jumping in the, the ice bath with uh, Mr. Walrus. For me, I've never I've never done ice bath. Like this is crazy. <laughs> but this is something that so many tourists do. Do you think people from Yakuza saw my video? Uh, maybe some, maybe some, yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. Ironically, tomorrow I'm going to uh, film a video in the world's hottest city. Wow. It's called Jahra. It's in Kuwait, which is a country in the Arab world. It's next to Qatar and Dubai. So it's pretty funny that like I did the world's coldest city and now the world's hottest city in one year. So hopefully I find somebody as nice as you to take me around. <laughs> <laughs> what is the hottest that was registered in that city? I think it was one time 56 degrees uh, Celsius, which is like 150 Fahrenheit. But now it's like 50, wow. 52 or 53 when oh I go. Oh my God. When I go. This, is, this is very hot. <laughs> what about in Yakutsk right now? In Yakutsk right now is around plus 30 degrees Celsius. And in Fahrenheit, I don't really know, like that, 90? That's like ni that's really hot. Yeah, this summer it was very hot, actually. So is there still ice on the ground, like the permafrost? Yes. Permafrost is like permanent ice. It doesn't melt. It melts slowly, but there is still ice on our ground. Do people in Yakus like really struggle when it's so hot be because that that's like too hot? No, we enjoy. <laughs> we love summer. Like after such a cold winter, I think people in Yakutia value summer more than other people in this world. I think so. I watch your Instagram and you're always doing like family dinners and lunches and hanging out in the countryside. Like it looks like a happy life. Yes, it's like summer. It's our, um, I don't know, like dessert, <laughs> like the sweet thing in our life, you know, <laughs> because in winter it's so cold and we don't spend that much time outside. And in summer, we try to spend as much as we can outside because it's warm, it's nice, and we can enjoy the sun and life. I remember like in the, in the, in the winter, like the moment you walk outside and you breathe in, it like hurts your chest. Oh. <laughs> oh, it hurts my chest, maybe not yours. <laughs> I'm happy to see you like still putting up content on Instagram. And I encourage you to also post on YouTube because it's, people are so interested in, in Yakutsk. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that people want to know more about our city, not only about the cold climate, but also about its culture, people and lifestyle. On that same note, I want to dig a little deeper into the culture of Yakuz because, you know, for those who haven't haven't seen the video, it's a fascinating place in northeastern Russia or Yakutia. I don't know. Some people say it's Siberia. If you look on Wikipedia, it shows that Siberia is like all of that land, but actually it's Yakutia, which is a different region. And the population is around 300,000 people. 
in the city, yes, but in Yakutia, it's around one million people. But, but, but Yakutia is huge. Yakutia is huge. Yeah, yeah, it's like five Frances. Five Frances. Wow. It's big. It's bigger than Argentina. That's <laughs> wild. So when you think about like one million people living in Argentina, it doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, a lot of people. <laughs> so I want to talk about the culture. Like you. Tell me about what it was like to grow up there. What are your memories as a kid? Like, was it safe? What kind of food did you eat? Just talk about life in Yakutsk a little bit. Um, so I was born in the village in Yuk in just the ordinary Yakutian village, and most time of my life I spent in our like eth ethnic group. You know, even though we are part of Russia our ethnic group is different and our culture language our lifestyle our mentality it's it's very different so when i was a little kid i didn't know that in other places winters are warmer and i did of course i didn't know that our land is the coldest inhabited place in the world for me it was just normal and i thought that it's normal to come back from school and to have you know <laughs> frost bites <laughs> on your cheeks <laughs> to i i thought that it was normal to you know touch the heating radiators with your hands to warm up I don't know, be maybe because it's so cold, um, the community of people here are closer to each other. We support each other a lot. And that is not something about in other places in the world. I, I don't say everywhere, but in some other places, especially in the cities, people are a bit far from each other, you know. We like to uh, gather all together we, because our life was all about um, farming. We work a lot and we also help each other with working. What kind of food do people eat in Yakutsk? Our traditional cuisine is mostly uh, meat and dairy. Like fruits don't grow in Yakutia because it's too cold. Vegetables, they started, we started to grow vegetables all year long, only just a few years ago. So in my childhood, vegetables and fruits was something for feast, maybe. In winter, it was just for New Year. So you're saying that you only ate vegetables on like holidays as a kid? As a kid, yes. That is B like bizarre. Yeah. And you're, yeah. So, you're so skinny. They tell us in, the, in America, they're like, you have to eat vegetables to lose weight. Clearly, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> fruits, it's something like you eat for holidays. It's, it's nothing like that. We value it a lot. But now it's more available than in my childhood. I don't think people quite understand that, like, in Yakuz, there's no vegetation. Like, you can't grow vegetables because there's permafrost in the ground. So you can't, like, plant seeds of different fruits because it won't grow, right? So if you grow vegetables, you have to do it indoors, right? Yeah. So uh, most vegetables we should uh, grow in the greenhouses yeah but we can plant some vegetables like potatoes they they grow well but fruits no like fruits need warm climate and this is not about us like all fruits are imported from warm places i'll never forget that that home that you took me to in the in the countryside of yakutsk and that lady was the shaman she was so sweet she was amazing yeah. and we went out to the lake and we um saw her cows somehow there's cows living on ice and then we went back and we, we saw how you guys keep the water can you talk about the process of preserving the the lake water yeah so uh, the drinking water we prepare in october when ice is not that thick when the uh, the thickness of ice is around like 50 centimeters and we collect this ice and leave it outside for winter and then when we need a drinking water, we take this ice inside of our houses and it just melts. We boil it and drink it for tea, for soups and so on. And in winter, in, in summer, when outside it gets too hot and ice can melt, we put it inside of a shed. Like we dig the ground and because our uh, ground is frozen, during whole year it it will have negative temperatures and we keep ice under the ground until the next october <laughs> so and and in next october we will do it again so this is like circle 
Wow. Of drinking wine. And then I remember <laughs> um, <clears throat> like the sashimi. What's it called? Ah, it's straganina. So we went to the fish market. Uh, this, that fish market was so cool. Like you, it's outdoors. Okay. It's, I, I'm just explaining this to people who have n- no idea. The fish market is literally outdoors in the, in the middle of the winter, minus 40 degrees. Doesn't matter. There are these ladies working there wearing really thick boots and fur and they're just like smiling and they have a lot of breathing smoke and there's all this frozen fish. Some of them are really small, like the size of my hand and some of them are the size of my body. Like they're huge fish that weigh so much. And then you just go there, you buy the fish and then you take it to the house, which is what we did. And the man, he used this really sharp knife to cut like really thin slices off the fish and you guys just eat it raw. You don't cook it. You just put salt and pepper on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our traditional cuisine because um, outside it's so cold. In winter, when we catch fish, it freezes just immediately. Just in a, in a few minutes, it's totally frozen. And because Yakutia is so huge and so low populated, the fish is ecologically pure and we can eat it just like this. And also one more thing about the, the cuisine. Um, I think the horses are really interesting. To, to most people in the world, the horses are seen as like cute little animals and, you know, pets or, you know, people use horse for transportation. They're just like a nice animal. But in Yakutsk, they're food and they've been food for, for centuries and centuries. I actually tried it. I, I, I thought it was pretty good. It looks like when the, they, is it, it's raw, right? It's raw horse. Yeah, yeah. It, it just looks like little pieces of bacon kind of before the bacon is cooked. Tell me about what the horse culture means to Yakutian people. We value horses a lot because this is very tough um, animal. And in Yakutia, we have our special breed like Saha horses. Uh, they can live outside whole year long, even when it's minus 50. So and they uh, like cows, for example, need people to survive. We need to feed them, we need to water them and so on. But horses, they find their food by themselves. They dig snow and find uh, the grass from the last year and they eat it. And they also eat snow instead of water and so on. And that's why they are very strong and they are not like, for example, bears Mm. or wolves. They eat only grass, so they don't have parasites. Just talking about the pure sure. meat <laughs> and yeah it tastes yeah. good i mean yeah. you guys have to live off what is given to you and and there's not much given to yeah. you as we talked about yes no fruits no vegetables we don't have much food to eat and um because horses have such a wild lifestyle they die a lot because of the wild animals because of wolves and also because outside is so cold they they also well they die f- from it and horse breeders they know exactly which horse won't survive during winter and instead of dying from wild animals you know they they are slaughtered Mm. and especially um foals like the baby horses Um, not all uh, baby horses are slaughtered some are them left but even though some of them slaughtered they still die a lot even like the strong ones got it because winters are so harsh Yeah, they really are harsh, but they're beautiful at the same time. So how does it feel to be from Yakutsk? Like you've traveled overseas, right? Well, I visited around 20 countries. Amazing. Which ones are your favorites? Korea. (laughs) Me too. South Korea. Yeah. (laughs) You're you're pretty close to South Korea. You just fly one flight to Vladivostok and then one flight to Seoul, right? Yeah, I've been there two times. Have you ever been to like a warm climate country? I've been to Egypt and it was okay <laughs> like it it i mean it wasn't too hot you know that's what i mean right and for because our summers are pretty hot i i bear it but i don't know about kuwait <laughs> i think that's too much <laughs> i'll send you a picture when i'm there and i'm sweating yeah it's gonna be a hundred <laughs> 110 degrees warmer than than we were in Yakuza. Yeah. How do you feel like traveling to warm climate places like Egypt, but you're from Yakuza? Like, do you feel different? Do you feel interesting? And also when you meet people and you tell them you're from Yakuza, like, what do they say? I'm really interested in being like 
in very very hard place but Egypt maybe because I was near the sea it was okay it wasn't very very hard for me and uh, when I say to people that I am from the coldest city in the world they are like oh no how do you survive and so on <laughs> their reaction normally is like that like our country would be destroyed if it was like minus 50 <laughs> we live here and we, we don't survive we have normal life we prosper we enjoy our life here that was like the moral of my story what you just said it's like people are so scared for you like how can you live and is it so dangerous but actually a it's very safe and b i was so shocked to see how normal it is like there are so many cafes it seems like there are hundreds or dozens of cafes there are restaurants there are bars there are beautiful churches there's even like a shisha bar where you can go and smoke shisha and which is what me and amar did which was really fun and there's hotels I thought there would be like no hotels in Yakutsk, but there's several hotels, there's parks. So everything that you would find in Prague, which is where I am right now, everything that you would find in Prague, you can find in Yakutsk. And by the way, in Prague, I used to live here 10 years ago in the winter. It gets like minus 20 here in the winter, minus 25. So it also gets really cold here. And that was kind of part of my big realization is that Yak Yakutian people are really humble and sweet and they live a normal life. What is that summer festival that I keep see seeing about in Yakutsk? So this is our main holiday, main traditional holiday, which is called Uhur. Basically, we celebrate uh, summer, we celebrate life with like our ancestors. Not everyone survived during cold winters because like 100 years ago, it was totally different place. And people who survived during winter, they all gathered together to celebrate summer, to finally like say, Ooh, we did it, like we enjoy <laughs> our life. And it has a lot of rituals. And this is all about our culture and really, it's cul I think it's culmination of our culture, of our religion, of something that we believe in. You just need to be here to see it. I think you should come <laughs> next next week, next week year. <laughs> I do want to come back. Actually, I really want to come back. It's, yeah. it's one of those places that just stick in your mind as like, wow, this is cool. You know, even yeah. after going to every country yeah. in the world, I've never been to a place, anything similar to Yakutsk, Yakutia. I want to go to Omyakon. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Have yeah. you been there? No, I haven't. It's a 900 kilometers from where I live. Yeah, so for people listening, Omyakon is actually the coldest inhabited settlement. It's not really a city. It's very small, but it's colder than Yakutsk. And it's like a, you have to drive for, what, two or three days to get there? Yeah. And it's also dangerous yeah. because if your car breaks down in the winter, you're going to die. Yeah. But I do want to go check out Omyakon, so maybe next time. But I also want to see Yakutsk in the summer. So maybe I'll have to take two more trips. One to Omyakon in the winter and one to Yakutsk in the summer. I want to say one more note on how different the culture is in Yakutia versus like Western Russia. Because so many people think Russia is like Moscow and St. Petersburg. But in reality, like it takes nine hours to fly there. It's, it's a different world. When you go, have you been to Moscow or St. Petersburg? Yes, yes, I've been to. How different does it feel to you? It's, it's like a different country, like it's totally different. The people's behavior, of course, the language is still the same, but the, the climate, the people, the culture, the food, it's, it's very different from where, where I live. And, and I think so too. I went to St. Petersburg after Yakutsk or after Yakutsk, I went to Vladivostok and then Irkutsk, which was amazing. And then Novosibirsk. And then I went to St. Petersburg and it's so crazy to me how big Russia is. And you guys are just so, so many ethnic groups, so different. And the nature is wonderful. Like Lake Baikal. Have you been to Lake Baikal? Not yet. You have to go to Lake Baikal. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's the deepest freshwater lake in the world. Uh, and it was frozen when, when I was there. And it's only frozen for or like three weeks out of the year. And we were lucky to get th those three weeks. So yeah, I'm definitely going to come back. So hopefully we can you, we can do something different yeah. when I come back. We are waiting <laughs> for you. <laughs> also, a note yeah. on Yakuz. Everybody, I mean, 
a lot of people think that it's so remote and so strange place. But look at you. You have like perfect Wi-Fi right now. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I have a microphone. And you, ha and you have a microphone <laughs> and a camera set up. I've, I've, I've spoken with maybe 15 people on this podcast and at least half of them have had like major Wi-Fi problems. And a lot of them are in like civilized countries and civilized cities but and big cities. But here you are in Yakutsk streaming perfectly and uh, it's pretty amazing. Tell me about like personal life. So I know congratulations on having a baby. That's really exciting. Yeah, thank you. How's that been being yes. a mom? I, you have two kids or one kid? Yes, I have two and kids. I'm sure that keeps you pretty busy, right? <laughs> yes, especially at night. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of your newborn? Mitchell. It's a Yakut name and it means smile, joy. In English, we have a word like Mitchell. It's the same name? No, it sounds similar, but it's different. But how do you spell that in English? M-I-C-H-I-L. If he ever travels to like the US, or it's, people will call him Mitchell for sure. <laughs> Mitchell, okay. Sounds American. I have two friends named Mitchell, but they go by Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, how is Mitchell? Is he what three, four months old? Yes, he's very good. He is uh, smiling, and now he started to turn. <laughs> he's not only just laying. Are you gonna teach him English and Russian and Yakutian? He'll know three languages. I will teach him his mother tongue Yakut first and only then Russian and English. As my oldest son, he talks Yakut now. I'm so amazed how your English is so good. It's like, clearly you put in a lot of effort to study, to, to learn. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. It's so always nice to hear it from a native. <laughs> so at one point you were doing YouTube a lot. I mean, obviously you have two kids now, so it's hard to keep it up, but do you still plan to, to continue doing YouTube? Because I hope you will keep making stories to share with, with the world. Yes, yes. Um, I have uh, a lot of ideas about my future videos and also thanks to you. You inspired me a lot with your passion, with your um, creativity about how to do it. And yeah, like I'm going to make a new videos about how we live here and uh, especially about like everyday life probably because there are so many things which are probably only about living in a cold place only about living in Yakutsk and also about our culture language so if you are interested welcome to my life in Yakutia yeah channel. so please tell people how they can find it it's just life in Yakutia the name yes uh, if you want to know more um, on YouTube my channel is called life in Yakutia and on Instagram and in Telegram. Beautiful. <laughs> Do you ever plan to live somewhere else or you're very happy in Yakutia? Yeah, for now we, we, we are here and we plan to live here unless something, but let's not talk about <laughs> we, it. We don't, <laughs> let's not talk about it. Yeah. We're not talking <laughs> politics on this podcast, which is kind of a refreshment yeah. because there's too much yeah. of it happening yeah. right now. Is there anything we missed about Yakuti in life or culture that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? What's the religion? Our religion is called Ayi Itagala. It's basically believing in nature. We believe that nature is something alive, that it has spirits, and we feel ourselves as not owners of this land, but as a part of this land. And we always remember that nature is stronger than us, and you know we should respect it, we should save it and this our culture is all about that the people they're not like catholic or anything uh, some people are orthodox like the russian church but mo like i'm talking about yakut people yakut people most of them believe so they're mostly just spiritual people kind of like the lady that we went to her house she was like a shaman yeah yes i i really believe in that and mo maybe because our land, it's so remote still, and it's so unpopulated. It's so far from civilization. Like our forests are very wild. You can feel it, like someone's presence. <laughs> and when you are in the forest, you should not speak loudly. You should be humble, and you shouldn't think something bad. You know, there are many like things that you should follow. This is our religion. What's the name of it again? Are you Italia?
Talk about languages. I mean, Yakutia is a fascinating language and it sounds nothing like anything I've ever heard of before in my life. <laughs> yes, uh, we, sp we have our own language, which is called Saha, Saha or Yakut language. And it actually belongs to Turkic group of languages. It's similar to Turkish, but it sounds very different. And yeah, this is my first language. First, I, I spoke Saha and then I learned Russian uh, when I went to school. Amazing. Maria, it's been a wonderful conversation to talk about Yakutsk, to relive some of the moments I had there six months ago. And I hope that people out there are introduced to your lovely world and just know that there's a very happy life of smiling people. Even your son is named Smile. That, that just proves that the people <laughs> in Yakutsk are extremely happy. So thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you very much for inviting me and I'm very, very happy to see you again. <laughs> Take care. Be safe. Yeah. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast episode. If you feel inspired by this conversation, please share it with somebody who would enjoy listening. And if you're here for the first time, make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Also, don't forget to leave a review. Every week, I'm going to be looking through them and highlighting my favorite one. And with that all being said, I will see you guys next week.